Jenna and Ashley and welcome to our channel Embracing 30s. We're taking you through our journey of what it means to be 30s for us. We are here at Gather's Tea Bar. We're actually in a restaurant called Hana and inside Hana is the Gather's Tea Bar. And maybe Ashley you can share how you kind of found out about this place. How I found out about this place is the owner of Gather's Tea Bar is right up here. And he opened this little place and took here and we're about to interview him. The owner is right here, my friend Peter. Yay, thank you for having us. Yes. <laughs> and explain what we have in front of us right now. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably more curious about this right now, if anything. <laughs> yeah, that is an Assam black milk tea. It's a classic, uh, it's a classic tea that's uh, popular in Taiwan. And I did add a brown sugar drizzle to it. Features our golden brown sugar boba. Yeah. A little bit different from most boba shops. There, it's typically um, brown or black boba, um, or more so black boba. But um, in our opinion, this is more natural of uh, what boba is. And then next one. So this is a black sesame uh, matcha latte with boba. Well, the black sesame is uh, settled a bit, but <laughs> I mean it's. It's a nice um, toasty flavor to the matcha latte. This one is one of my personal favorites Ooh. of the matchas. Why is it your personal favorite? I just love the Asian flavors of like, yeah. most. So I think most people think that oh, black sesame is. You know, I don't know if for like Chinese, there's something called uh, di ma wu. I grew up eating that, so I love that kind of taste. Uh, but most people don't know what black sesame is. They don't even try to order it. I mean, I, I think that's the most underrated uh, matcha drink we have, but mm. people who do like it or do try it, they, they love it. Because yeah. it, it creates a, it has a nice toasty flavor to it. So This is our strawberry matcha latte. Strawberry matcha latte. This one is inspired by a shop out in SF. Uh, it's called Boba Guys. Or this is my take on their, on their uh, popular drink. Mm -hmm. um, and what makes this different? We do it a little bit different from Boba Guys. Um, Boba Guys does use a strawberry puree. So we do actually use a strawberry jam. So with the mm. strawberry puree, with their drink, it makes it more like a strawberry milk with a hint of matcha to it. I thought it was just okay when I, when I first had it. So, <laughs> yeah, but... I love it. <laughs> I know it's a popular drink and I want to create my own variation of it uh, and innovate off that. And so I decided to use a strawberry jam and so when you mix it together, it is more matcha milk with like textured strawberry mm. bits that um, they get from it. So it's like a matcha with a taste of strawberry versus strawberry milk with a taste Correct. of matcha. Yeah. This so, last one where you can't really see it, but look how look how cute the yeah. little <laughs> you can you can yeah. She's talking about this right here. Yeah. A little hard. The tea that's inside it, it is our most popular uh, seller. It is mm. our hoji cha milk tea. Uh, and I topped it with a sea salt cream. That's also really popular for us. This one I'm more inspired by a bakery out in LA, uh, or more from Taiwan, uh, called 85C. So it has a nice balance of uh, salty and sweet to me. So, try it? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like waiting. <laughs> and the best thing is to mix this. <laughs> Do you need to mix this? That one? No, yeah, yeah, with the brown sugar drizzle. Like in the it'd bottom? It would be best to mix it a little bit. But thank you! Of course. Wow, the black, I like the black sesame. It definitely gives that toasty. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one's good. I'm gonna try the hot one. Yeah. You don't want to try this? I do. You don't, well, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of jam, but I'll mix this right? Because this is Embracing 30s, and I said <laughs> that I was going to try new things, I'm going to try it. <laughs> I think I did, okay. <laughs> but it's good. Okay. It's really, really good. Wow, I like that. Mm -hmm. I think I first um, had like roasted green tea in Korea. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was really good. You know, maybe you know what? I think I had. I did have a lot of the sea salt. <laughs> That's a strong flavor in my mouth no, right now. The like green tea. There's there's roasted green tea in there. Well, this whole thing is. <laughs> Well, so how do you guys know each other? Actually, I'm trying to think the first time we met. Yeah. I don't you know. know. <laughs> I know it's it? home, like our, like my home church, 
in Chinatown. But I don't know if we met there. I'm pretty sure it was summertime. We were hanging out like right before college, and I think we were yeah. trying to. We all were talk sharing about who was going to which college. But that was it. Wait, wait you didn't. Go, you guys didn't go to the same high school. No. no. Different high school, just same yeah. church. church. Same church. church. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like group of friends. Yeah. Yes. I think that's church. I think friend. we were in a hangout, mm -hmm. but that was literally it. Yeah. Like, we How just, long ago was that? We're talking about high before college. So high school, eighteen when we were eighteen. Oh. And then so, we just became social media friends. Yeah. This is probably <laughs> the first time we're actually like literally <laughs> like talking. Oh, well, really? Like, yeah. And then I remember the time I bumped into you at when you worked at J Crew. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I don't even remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just shopping around, and then you call me and I'm like, oh, oh actually. <laughs> yeah. So you, you grew up here? <laughs> so I pretty much grew up here Bridge, in Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Uh, Bridgeport. Okay. Yeah, kind of <laughs> area. So, uh, born and raised in Chicago. What did you study in yeah. And how'd you get here? So I actually studied accounting, but before doing accounting, I was still undecided on what I wanted to major in. I was in between doing chemistry mm. and accounting. I wanted to do chemistry and possibly get into pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to do accounting. Even then, I think it was uh, my second year, two years into accounting, that's when I decided I don't think I want to do accounting anymore. While you were in school? While I was in okay. school. But at the same time, I'm gonna finish. It stems from like, a lot of my, my family members. They started businesses themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I figured, okay, I'm doing accounting. I can learn a lot of the, the basic fundamentals of business. I'm just finish up with that. I just really want to do something, like start some, some kind of business. But I don't know what. I think it wasn't until a year in after doing marketing. I travel out to LA. I love just like checking out new new restaurants, new tea shops. I figured, okay, what is my passion? Maybe I can like dabble into that and um, start this. Yeah. At that point, how old were you? I was 23, 24. Okay, okay. So 20, yeah. Okay. It was one year after I graduated out of college. Mm -hmm. I started uh, brainstorming into researching into how to like, like, run tea shops. Even when I was at the tea shops, I would check out like, oh, how, like watching them, how they were doing the teas back there. And then eventually, uh, I decided to ask two partners back then if they want to partner up and do it. And I started a tea shop. So we went through a lot. We went. We actually enrolled in some global uh, tea making class and, oh, wow. and, and out in LA. Yeah. And then we spoke with a lot of the. Uh, with, some of the owners at the shops, and they gave us some insight about it. Long story short, in the end, it didn't work out too well, uh, just financially, because we were all out of college. We we did have some money set aside, but then like we needed a lot more money just to commit to like building up a shop. So I continued on. Um, I left my marketing job and I I, I pursued my ma my intended major, which was accounting, and so I did that for the last five years. Okay. And so fast forward till to the time I started this. My, the job that I'm working at, they, they decided to close up shop, or they're still closing up shop. So I figured it's the opportunity for me to just uh, start on that, on, on the project back again. I figured, okay, I'm, I'm passionate about tea, so, and I know a lot from five years ago when I was uh, trying to do it. For me, it was more of a quest. It's a quick start. Uh, I knew my uncle had a space in UIC. UIC. I figured, okay, this. I can just take a part of his space and just, okay. just give it a try. Mm -hmm. He gave me the okay, and then six months later, here I am. So when did you open? I opened November, for, like about the first or second week of November. 2019? Of 2019. Yeah. So it's, it's only been... Geez, it's fresh. Yeah. yeah. So it's only been two, like about two months. <laughs> so I heard this was kind of your old 30th birthday gift to yourself. It is. Yeah. So... Oh, so oh, you fine. are... How old are you now? <laughs> I'm 30 now. Yeah, Embracing 30. <laughs> Before turning 30, I wasn't feeling accomplished. You know, like my goal was always to start something up. When you started in November, could you just talk a little bit about like how has the progression been since November? Like how the business is going up mm -hmm. until now? It's been good. It's been actually very good. People still come in here at um, like 20 degrees, mm -hmm. still asking for our cold drinks yeah. when I offer like hot drinks. Like, <laughs> they, a lot of it had to do with uh, my friends like, coming on regular in the beginning because of the word of mouth. Like I've been seeing a lot of people I have, I'm not familiar with. Besides your place, what's your favorite bubble tea place in Chicago? I would say before my go-to was either Taipei Cafe. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jasmine. Mainly because they have a good strong tea taste and they're consistent for a while. And that to me is a very important. 
And same with like, my consultation. Like, mm. Everything just has to be consistent. It has to have a good, strong tea taste. One question I do have is why did you decide on the plastic lid and not the seal? There's a few reasons. With the seals, it's fun to like pop it and like it's more traditional to time like, like Taiwanese style. Um, but I figured with the lids, it's a little cleaner, classier, um, and I can that way I can adjust the uh, sugar level or do any other kind of adjustments. Mm -hmm. with it, so. so, what would be an advice you would give someone who just turned your door already in their mid thirties, late thirties, um, wanting to start? Start it might sound cliche, but it's just like <laughs> you just go for it. Mm -hmm. I would research into a lot of things, and like I would know the concept of a lot of things, but I wouldn't like actually go out and do it. The more older I get, the more I understand that like if you just want something done, you just have to do it. Thank you so much for taking the time to you know, have us here, yeah. make us drink, and take your questions. I know, right? Totally. We made it his face. I know. It's open. Yeah, and we just want to wish you the best of luck yeah. in, in your future endeavors. So, yeah. Thank you. The owner of Gather Tea Bar is my friend. Oh my god, wrong <laughs> The owner of tea bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a, an option in the future to be able to. Hi, Hi. welcome to Embracing Your Eyes.